try again. So um, one of the most common things I get asked, um, either in person or via emails, um, is people are trying to write SE Linux policy for uh, their individual applications. Um, and um, over the years, uh, my, my thinking on this has evolved. Um, and usually the first thing I tell the person that wants to do it is, um, is first think about just sticking it into a container. Um, and one of the reasons I do that is I try to explain to them that, you know, uh, Android phones right now are defaulted to uh, have SE Linux in forcing mode. And um, there's basically no way to even turn the SE Linux off. You can't set in four zero on your on your cell phone. Um, and the reason the cell phones and Android can do that is um, is that basically uh, everything in the in the phone is an application. So, um, and you can think of an application in an Android case as being the same as a container in a Linux case. Um, and really what happens is um, it eliminates the complexity of SE Linux. So SE Linux is all about controlling communications paths uh, between different applications running with different uh, labels. Um, and in a container, we eliminate all communications paths between applications, and we really try to default them to only talking over the network. Um, on a standard Linux system, when you put two applications, two confined applications on our system, there's, there's hundreds of ways for Linux pro two Linux processes to potentially communicate, um, right through the file system, through Unix domain sockets, um, just uh, you know interaction with the kernel uh, and, and things like that. But when you containerize it, um, you stick the process in the container where everything is a single label. Uh, one of the expressions I like to say when I talk about container technologies of what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Um, the containers cannot break out of the confinement. Um, and um, actually, the, the few times that they have, uh, SE Linux has, you know, there has been vulnerabilities. SE Linux has blocked almost every vulnerability because SE Linux protects your file system. So we can uniquely label every container um, to be isolated with and then enforce it with SE Linux. Um, and um, so it's really perfect way to, to use SE Linux. Um, the other thing you get with containerization is you get a, uh, a lot of additional uh, security you know, beyond what SE Linux does. Um, for instance, uh, you know, the PID namespaces means that the process inside your container can only see the processes in its app. It doesn't see the rest of the process in the system. Um, network name, namespace uh, allows you to only communicate with processes on your same network or even dropping network namespace uh, from a container means that the, the container process can't even use the network. Uh, doing this with SD Linux is, is possible, but it is so complex and only the most advanced people in the world, uh, in the SD Linux world, have ever been able to really control uh, access to the network. Finally, things like dropping capabilities, user namespace, seccomp, read-only proc, and sys. These are all features of containers that SE Linux can take advantage of, and theoretically you could do with SE Linux, but it's very, you know, we don't have um, the same level of controls that are involved in, in, you know, isolating each one of them. So putting a process in a container not only, you know, takes advantage of SE Linux for security, but all the other security features on the system. Um, now, when you want you know, when you have a process in a container, the, the only time a process in a container has to really understand SE Linux or people writing an application for a container is when you're sticking holes in the container. Um, and this is usually involves, you know, usually it's volumes. So if you're volume mounting a, pro, uh, a directory into a container, um, you have to set the SE Linux labels. So since, since a container process is not allowed to read or write any content, outside of the container environment, we have to change the labels on the volumes that you mount into a container. Um, and uh, SC Linux says uh, container technologies have a colon Z and a colon capital Z. And for Europeans, a colon Z and a colon capital Z. Um, and the colon Z uh, will label the volume that you're mounting into the container with a shared label. So that means two different containers running with different SC Linux labels can share the content. But if you want the content to be private to the container, you can do it with a colon capital Z. Um, uh, so anyways, the really what I'm encouraging here is, you know, if you want, if you really want to confine an application on the system with something like SC Linux, 
I encourage you to, to look at containerizing it before you actually have to dive into writing FC Linux policy. In certain cases, uh, putting a container in, um, or putting a process in a container uh, could involve additional access. So if you're really poking some heavy duty holes into a container, uh, for instance, you might want to have a process that's in a container and it can read your log files. Um, uh, you know, you want to mount the file log into the container. Um, we could, you could, uh, you know, attempt to write policy for that. Um, but there's actually a really cool, uh, nice tool called Uditsa, or Utica is how I would pronounce it. But Uditsa um, is a tool, U-D-I-C-A, that allows you to write custom policy, custom SE Linux policy for a containerized application. So if so let's look at the other case. So I said, in the best case, I believe you should put it in a container. Um, but if you, you know, really cannot put a container or you really don't want to put a, uh, an application in a container uh, and you want to write policy for it, the first thing I would do on a non-containerized SC Linux policy is to look for an application that has policy written for it that pretty much matches um, the functionality you have in your app. Um, so often cases, there's lots of apps that are similar to other apps. So uh, as an example, that would be, say, Apache and, and Nginx. Um, so in the SE Linux world, you know, we don't want you to write new policy for Nginx. We'd rather have you just assign it labels um, that would work with the Apache pro, uh, labels. Uh, so um, it's, it's often easy to... Uh, what I would do is I would go through the uh, file context file at CSE Linux context targeted file context and look for processes that you know, or applications that are similar to what you're trying to confine and, and see if you can use those labels to assign to your program and you get it to run. And even if you have to add a few allow rules to, say, the existing policy, that's often better than writing a policy from scratch. Um, uh, also, when you uh, when we're writing policy in that mode or in, in the the other mode, I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, it's all often smarter to run with uh, permissive mode um, because uh, SC Linux will block and at the first access, so you might get a, a block of uh, uh, say an open, and then you so you add that allow rule, and then you get a block to the read. Um, and it's better to run in permissive mode, get collect all the ABCs, and then try to make good decision. Uh, one last thing that, um, so, well, let's, uh, one common mistake that people wait, make when they're writing pol SE Linux policy is they often just want to use audit to allow and add lots and lots of um, allow rules to a system. Um, it's often, you should always think, you know, if I'm trying to access something that has, say, a generic label like Byron T or Violive T, um, it's better to think about creating a new type for that that directory structure of that data um, on the system rather than just using it, allow adding allow rules for generic types. Um, so, when, when anytime you see a generic type being added to um, uh, you know via the audit to allow rule, always think that you need to add your own types. Uh, lastly, if you can't find an application that's similar to your application um, that you want to confine, you uh, always there's a, a nice tool inside of uh, SE Linux called uh, SE Policy Generate. And what SE Policy Generate will do is actually take a look at your application and will actually ge generate a framework for writing SE Linux policy. It will look for you know, things like the RPM contents and other things to figure out what types to generate. And as I said, the hardest, some of the hardest things about SE Linux is figuring out how to label different content, different content on disk that you want to use. Um, so in summary, uh, when you're looking at writing SE Linux policy, the first thing is, you know, do you need to do it at all? Wouldn't it be better just to containerize your application or run your application as a container on the system? The next you know, if that doesn't work for you, then the next step is to find an application that's very similar to your application and maybe just extend the policy or change the file types to, to include your executable in, un, underneath the default policy. And then the third thing is if you need to write policy to use uh, um, you know, from scratch, then to use SE Policy Generate 
command to actually give you a good kickoff spot. And then always remember that when you're jet entering rules, um, use audit to allow and audit to allow dash capital R, which will help group and find uh, global uh, names for adding to your policy. And then always try to get someone to help advise you when you write your policy to, you know, second, to look at it secondly. So thanks. That's my talk on writing SLA's policy. And uh, hopefully next week we'll uh, have a guest and we'll be talking about um, other topics. Thanks.